Hey guys and welcome to another edition of Donkcast. We have not a whole lot of news this week, but we do have some pretty interesting stuff to talk about. Is there's not a whole lot of TCG news as such, but we do have a big announcement, and that is that we've got a fourth member with us this week. So everybody say hello, Al. Hi, Al. Hi, Al. <laughs> Hi, Al. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we're, as always, we'll be joined by Ian and Jacob as well. Say hello, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, so, yeah, not been, not been too crazy a week. Um, as I say, this past week, it's been so busy, man. What did we do? Yeah, this past week at League, I broke the format. Just want to get straight out in there. Just tell you guys, the format's busted. There will be a video coming out later on in the week. Um, Naganido Stack Attacker Buzzwall GX is the best deck in format. All of you guys, of course, agree, yeah? Nah. Yeah, well, <laughs> I would just like to ask you where you finish. And yeah, I was, I was actually place. just going to say it wasn't first place, was I it? I finished undefeated. It wasn't first place, though, was and it? And I said to Ian, I says, look, <laughs> give me a game and we'll decide who truly got first place. And he ran out the door scared. <laughs> he was like, no, I can't do it. <laughs> Can't do it. Yep. So it turns out Tapu Lele is a bad card. Sell them on eBay now before everyone else works it out. You know, you heard it here first. You want to get rid of your Tapu Lele's now while they're worth a little bit of money. And a wee disclaimer, if you sell your Tapu Lele's, don't complain to us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, Ultra Ball clearly has no place in this format. It's, it's done. Ultra Ball's had its time. And it's all about Great Ball now. Great Ball is a better card. You don't have to discard any cards. It makes so much more sense. Guys, honestly, like, you didn't think it would work, did you? No, I, I've always had faith in this kind of beast <laughs> box deck. With, with no Ultra Ball, I think, think that's quite brave. I don't know if Great Ball's the card I would replace Ultra Ball with, though. Well, um, I don't know. What I'm going to do for the people watching this, I'm going to stick my list up on the screen just because, you know while we're talking about it and then they get a little early preview and all that sort of stuff yeah um <laughs> but no I, i'm pretty i'm pretty happy with it the um the, the reason i'm not using ultra ball is because you've got the ultra space it feels like you're just getting everything out a whole lot quicker anyway so I, it was a real fun take on a kind of modern style deck like not using tapio to search stuff not using ultra ball to get stuff it just seemed so like different you know what i mean like that's staple that's the first cards that go into a deck is ultra ball and then probably tapu lele but we're seeing more and more in this format tapu lele just isn't as good as it once was like with shrine of punishment running about it just seems so detrimental to have a lele on your bench am i right in saying that is, is that just me no I, I agree what tapu lele is there for is to take 140 damage from trash launch and die exactly it, it, it's it's so scary man like and it's so easy to build up knockouts with trash Lanch, with sledgehammer with like just it's just a sitting target and it's it really accelerates games especially in, when you're trying to play these one prize decks if you do put down that tapu lele it really does hurt your setup you playing something like uh one of those heracross decks that you flip the coin to um stay alive and all that sort of stuff like if you're losing two prizes off an easy lele, that just seems horrible. So yeah, I, I just yeah, wanted to you play quite... it for your rare candy decks. But of if course, you're playing a rare candy deck, it's probably Rayquaza, and you just yeah. use Tempest for that anyway. The thing with so you want to avoid it as much as possible. The thing with like um, GX decks, though, I feel like if someone's taking a two prize on a lele, they're probably not getting rid of your main attacker. So, like, I'm pretty okay for the most part in GX decks to lose the Lele, but then the two prizes they've gained is a lot worse than taking two prizes off, for example, a, a Rayquaza or a, or, a, or a Buzzwall GX or something like that, you know, Zoroark. Like, I'd much rather be taking the two prizes on something like that. It's just easier to do it on a Lele, I guess, but yeah. I just wanted to quickly mention that as I say it was that that's been my week that's really all I've done apart from I did get some videos recorded for the channel um so we have got a bunch of really really fun decks coming out a lot of stuff from uh the regionals that we talked about on the podcast last week um stole a couple of the deck lists from there and had a bit of a play with them um 
Yeah, not not nothing too major Pokemon wise. What about you guys? What have you been up to? Dead silence. And dead silence. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a busy one, guys. <laughs> so that can get edited out. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to leave it in now. <laughs> I've J- been working on my deck for the XY tournament. The XY tournament is definitely something I want to talk about, man. The XY tournament is going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, recently, we we kind of had this idea floating about of running a small tournament with the intention of inviting old players back. So we set this thing up and it's going to be xy format only so only cards from the xy set so it's going to be like kind of like expanded but like a lot more limited it's like a limited expanded yeah like because there's no black and white and there's no sun and moon but there's everything in between you know so decks like um night march is going to be there probably um turbo dark uh seismitoad possibly you know stuff like that could really come back and and have like one more day to just have a bit of a play uh, i'm excited about it though yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun man it's been it's been cool dusting dusting off the old shaman exes and things like that i must admit um, i started building um I, no secret i'm playing turbo dark for this one and i started i, I, I put the deck together and you know that way i was like Oh, put one of supporters in and I was like what am I doing why am I putting one of supporters in and then I was like this is how we used to play we used to put one <laughs> yeah. of supporters in battle compressor them and then get them back with versus seeker and play like that and I was like what am I doing this feels so different and um, like being quite happy to drop down like a two Lysander count and stuff like this I was like what's going on I'm so used to playing four Guzma four Cynthia four like four of supporters that you need to play it's crazy man I really wish you'd let us play Guzma in this format. I'm, play, I'm playing Vulcanian, and Guzma's so much better than Lysander and Vulcanian. Well, actually, speaking of playing four Cynthia's, do you actually need to? Depends it seems on the to deck. me, a lot of good decks actually don't. Um, a lot of the mag cargo decks. It's probably a four, four of in every deck I've played recently, but... Well, the, the Zoroark decks are a bit different um, because they're relying more on like just picking out what they want from... Yeah, they're consistent the... enough now that they're running Great Ball and things that they just don't need it. I still think you need probably three Cynthia, but... My uh, my shrine list plays two um, and four Lily because yeah. it's... Yeah, it's yeah I suppose. Of... Because Lily is way better if you're using my card. So, like, of course. Four, four Lily... Two Kikui, three Acrobite, which is the same count that Caleb Gethemer won Philadelphia with. Yeah. Um, so I've more or less taken his list. I've made maybe one or two very small changes here or there, uh, but I'm playing basically that list, and it's great. Yeah, I, I love those Shrine decks, man. Like, Shrine of Punishments is genuinely one of my favourite new cards that's come out. It's been so much fun just playing with the one prize attackers feels so safe you, it feels like your opponent has to work so so hard to take big knockouts and it's why like I'm, I'm loving spread right now uh, no secret that spread is definitely my favorite deck out of this new format that we've got here and yeah man like shrine of punishments is a lot of fun i've not had that i've had a lot of time to play shrine uh, with garb buzzwall though I, I wish i would play that a little bit more you need to try it out a bit more, man. It's a great deck. But, like, obviously Shrine's kind of the, the big thing at the minute. Um, and people are playing, like, Sylveon to beat it and that crazy Steelix, Wailord, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what I think some people are sleeping on a little bit, and one of the reasons that when Celestial Storm first came out, I went straight after the stack attackers, was how good Naganado stack attacker, and now if you're putting Buzzwall in it as well, how good a matchup that has against it it does you've ultra ultra space counters the shrine you've yep. got um stacks to reduce damage that something like a garbador would be doing you're hitting the garbs for weakness you're hitting the buzzwalls for weakness you're one shot in the mccargo if they're playing the weavile i wouldn't sleep on steel type either um yeah the problem absolutely. with that is you don't have space on your bench to put your own mccargo down as uh, we all know you need as many snails as possible <laughs> 
<laughs> I feel as if Al's favourite card is now my cargo because it makes these janky decks just work a little bit better. <laughs> Really consistent. Al loves a janky deck. <laughs> what about you, Jacob? What have you been up to this week? Um, not much actually. As well, trying to consider a deck for the X Y. Um, I haven't got so far as to build something. I think the issue is there's just so much that you could build that yeah. I can't narrow my choice down. Um, so yeah, I have, still have no idea. Um. But we'll, we'll get there. Apart from that, not much. I was super tempted to be, be that guy and just play Greninja Break. Oh, please don't. <laughs> please, that should be in the rules, so that's bad. No Greninja Break. <laughs> just out of interest, by the way, while discussing this, is Hex Maniac banned? No, I'm not banning anything. Okay. I was going to just ban Trump open. Card. Like, if I was banning anything, I would ban Trump Card. But I feel like... I feel like everyone, it, sh it should be a little more of a gentleman's rule to just not play trump card. Like, mm -hmm. maybe one, to have a bit of fun with it, fine, but like, if you're going to play Seismitoad trump card, then you, you don't deserve to play at all. <laughs> you're, banned, you're banned from the shop. Okay, fair enough. Like, if you're going to use it in like a meme sense, then that's fine, but like, Lysander trump, uh, trump card with Seismitoad like, broke the format entirely, and yeah i don't i don't think people will play it to be fair we we don't have a super competitive shop do you know what i mean i feel like we are the more competitive people in the shop so I, I wouldn't if anyone asks i'm gonna just tell them trump cards banned um but that would really be it i wouldn't ban anything yeah, else and i the reason being like it wasn't banned back then do you know what i mean it wasn't banned until the f the rotation afterwards when uh, forest became a little bit broken like that got banned and then even this rotation now all the hex maniacs and wallies and all that got banned i really don't think it's that much of an issue yeah i'm, I'm with you i don't i don't even know that many people have the lysander trump card to put in the deck anyway i think no, because it was it was pretty much banned as soon as it came out i think yeah they had like one show in a big tournament I, it might have even been worlds um, but that was just before I started playing. I have like one in my folder because I remember looking at it and going, "Oh, I think that's that band card." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I so think they put one copy of it in one of the like battle arena decks they made. So I think a lot of people might have just exactly one. Oh, really? Yeah. Fair enough. I've got one, and I'm really sure I never got any packs from that. Yeah. So it's a weird really... card to put in a battle arena deck, yeah. like because like how like maybe they planned it out before they knew that was happening. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Like it, ugh, those battle arena decks were fun. Now that I think about it, like just as you've said that there, I'm like, yeah, those are awesome. I, I had a couple of them, oh, but the new ones you can have mega charms on. Oh, the oh, I don't even start. I don't with get that. that, man. Like they gave us before they gave us Keldio and Rayquaza, and they were actually like very relevant really cards that. like the Rayquaza deck was like a real big deck at the time it would be like giving us something like Volcanion and well, I mean actually you know I'm I mean? like uh, gonna be busy so I won't be able to come to the XY tournament but yeah. if I did I'd probably just build the Keldia and run that with Rain Dance oh Keldio's yeah. uh, because I know Ian's playing a fire deck ah Keldio's yeah. expanded man <laughs> that's, that's black and white isn't it is it Oh yeah, it is. Isn't I think it, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and re if it's not, if it's not like Rain Dance, definitely is. Mm. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, he's black and white, isn't it? Yeah, man. That's 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 why I think it'll be quite fun because there'll be a couple of cards that would make a deck stuff like computer search and stuff like, um, like, well, all the aspects really, but like, yeah, all um, black and white. but yeah, like delusion, um. Keldio is definitely like something that you would go oh can we play that or even Ray like Ray uh, Reels would be quite a cool play but you, you can't play that either it's XY only which I think is different because it was kind of old Japanese format like uh, they played X and Y on for standard right all the way up until Sun and Moon came out so it's kind of like that I guess I don't know it's going to be a lot of fun definitely definitely um yeah, we'll jump into some news. There wasn't a whole lot of news to cover. We we got pretty far last week as far as news. However, one of the big things coming out of uh, 
coming from Poke Beach is that the rumour is when Knight Unison comes along now, Knight Unison will probably be a part of our set like next May. But it's looking like we're going to have a new Shaman EX. It's not going to be Shaman. It's going to be Deden GX. And it's going to probably have the ability that you may... When you play it to your uh, from your hand to your bench, you may discard your hand and draw six cards. Now, if that ain't broken, I don't know what is. It's worth... It's worth saying that it's not been 100% confirmed it's yet. It's not been 100% but confirmed, but... Poker Beach are pretty reliable, so and if they're saying... It was also picked up by PTCG Radio as well from a different source. Oh, and well, they, yes. they both have... Um, they both have different sources that come out with the same information, and they've already leaked a few cards in the past. They leaked Nanu, they leaked um professor elm's lecture is that what it's called uh, professor yeah, bridget whatever professor it's called professor bridget use its right name professor bridget yeah, professor bridget but nobody's going to play it because no one knows bridget <laughs> it gets you 3 zorua what more do you want you want a Diane C prison star and two rockrocks Diane C prison play star 60 HP <laughs> it's a 60 hp rock rock <laughs> no, you've run enough nest balls and great balls now that you don't want to put a type of lay down to play it. Well, <laughs> and not... you don't want to run three copies of it because that's three cop spaces that you can have great balls in. The one card, <laughs> the one <laughs> deck I see we it. We all know great ball is the best <laughs> card in format. The one deck, as we're getting off topic already, but the one card, the one deck I do see um, Professor Bridget working in absolutely perfectly is in uh, Lost March. Because not only can you grab Hoppips, you can grab Natus, you can also grab Skiplum with it. Because it's not basic 60 HP Pokemon, it's 60 HP or less Pokemon. So you can grab the Skiplum and then... So essentially that becomes a 4 of in Lost March. Because you can use it turn 1 to get down your basics. And then you can use it again to get Skiplums. Evolve up and then suddenly all your jump luffs are out. And you're you're doing crazy damage because everything's in the lost zone and all that sort of stuff. So there is gonna be fun. merit for it in yeah. decks like that. Um, but I don't know how many decks like that there's actually going to be. I would definitely say it's worth a play every now and again. Like there's going to be certain decks. I mean, at one point, um, Zoroark Galissapod was playing like I know obviously for Galissapod it wouldn't work because one pod's goal was get seven HP. But, like, at one point, that was playing four Bridgets. So, I can definitely see it in Zoroark decks where you can get rid of some of the extra ones. Um, I, I do know what you're saying. Like, there's not a whole lot of merit to putting down all of them when... Or, like, putting down the Lele when you're not getting exactly what you want all the time. But if Garb ever has a resurgence, you don't want to be playing Nest Ball all the time. So, I could definitely see... Professor Elm having a real solid niche and we're I'm definitely getting a play set of them as soon as possible. Put it that way. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the card you need. Not one you gotta like yeah. really want to use. Or want to have to use. <coughs> but uh, yeah. Just to jump back to the Denny for yes. a second yeah. as you were saying. You got there's a, f- a few ways that I, I kinda see this. Like first of all, the way we're talking about Lele is the way that a lot of people talked about Shame and EX back in the day, where it's got a great ability, etc., etc., but it's so much of a liability that you almost don't want to play it. Now, you can debate whether Shaman EX is better than Lele, and people have quite strong opinions on it, but they're both terrific cards in their own way. Is is Dedenny going to be another one of these where... Yes. Is it, is it going to have 110 HP, for example, like Shaman did? It wouldn't it surprise be that me. Low? If, like 140 or something. It wouldn't surprise Just, me if it had the lowest HP imaginable. So the lowest HP we have right now in a GX would be Marshadow, 150. Yeah, 150. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it had 150 or less. It mm-hmm. wouldn't shock me. However, I would say that it would be more worth playing down than a Lele because this gives you... It, dependent on the deck, all right? Dependent on the deck, that's definitely something I want to say. You're not going to want to play this in like Zoroark Decidui because you want the huge bench for all your Decidui and you also don't want to discard 
the odd decidui or rare candy that's stuck in your hand so you never want to just discard your hand draw six you want to shuffle draw six so i don't ever see it seeing a lot of play in like zoroark decks but in speed decks like if you imagine back to like um i mean night march would love this card night march yeah. would sliver all over this card man that it's got to be like absolutely busted in something like a night march and maybe that's where we see it like break something as an expanded um, but we've got the Zoroark coming out that does essentially Night March. I can't remember exactly what the attack's called, but like that for a dark DCE does twenty for every Pokemon in your discard. Mm-hmm. So I could definitely see it seeing play in there. Um, I mean, my my first thought was Malamar uh, to get the energy into the discard. Yeah, well, Malamar yeah. does love a bit of speed. Do you know what I mean? Like it would quite mm-hmm. happily take. The only thing with Malamar is you've got four malamar on the the bench plus like you, you struggle for bench space in malamar but if we ever get a card that even something like um j- just anything that needs a little bit of speed this card will be busted in it mm-hmm. um as i say something like night march or like the old seismitoad lists and stuff like that that used to play all, like all of these like shamans to just draw out the deck and get all the stuff they wanted all the trainers mail and just really command the board lock up the board and then be done with it do you know what i mean so as soon as we get any deck that requires any little bit of speed this deck this card could just throw over the edge man absolutely it, I, you're saying things like the sidui and zoroark and maybe it doesn't fit in those as well but if you if you think about like vile plume the sidui and things like that they were playing Shaman as well, so they could get into the rare candy. So maybe there is a place but for Shaman was, a one off. Shaman was dropped too, though. Yeah, do you but know what I mean? I, so you wouldn't, if you had the I one suppose. rare candy in hand, you weren't discarding it to drop. Maybe, do you know what? I guess. I'm, maybe I'm, there's I'm, a place for it. I'm not saying it would never work, but I'm. Yeah. Because even with the, the, the Decidueye, I guess you can recycle like three cards. So maybe this card and stuff isn't the end of the world. Like, kind of using it almost as a setup card in that sense could be interesting although we are getting a low on nine tails gx which is obviously considerably better to find rare candies and definitely, things like that definitely. Um, the other thing that jumped out to me about this is how much is it going to go for oh yeah it'll be 40 50 pound easy like i'm telling because you as soon as it comes out it'll be extortionate absolutely so if you're pulling them at pre-release so you might want to yeah you might want to get, <laughs> get rid of them nice and early well, they're, they're top because surely they're going to come back to the mean. I mean, people were paying 40, 50 quid for Lele's at one point, and now you're picking them up for 20 odds. That's a year in, though, remember? Like, we've had Lele for a while. And the other thing to bear in mind is Lele will probably be rotated by the time, or it'll be going out when this thing actually becomes legal. So, if we get this in May, we're going to have Lele and Dedeni in the same rotation until September. Ah, couldn't we just have a format without those for a little bit? Could we just all one more mad cargos? <laughs> Honestly, Al, like, I don't think you're far off it at the moment. I mean, aside from Memphis Regionals, which we'll get into in just a second, um, that's all I've seen. I've literally hardly seen a Lele in weeks. It's all been my cargo and Oranguru and one prize attackers and dealing specific damage on specific turns and doing all this sort of stuff it's been it's been a real interesting way that the format's developed over the past few weeks and i, I genuinely have hardly seen a tap of lily i can't imagine. Yeah, forget all that now we're back to buzzwell gx and zora <laughs> yeah, like the good old days that's true i mean i kind of mentioned it earlier but i really like the um those sort of one prize attack and decks same that man. are starting to become so much more viable because but then you're gonna. It's, it may well swing the other way with tag team or whatever it's going to be called. Of because course. I mean, are these things just so broken that the game gets to a point where it's just ridiculous? Well, um, not the one we've seen since it dies to sledgehammer. Well, see, that's the thing. Like, obviously, but then if you're taking three prizes by knocking that out, does that then just make it so much of a liability that it breaks the game anyway? Do we, like, for something like that though, right, if we get any sort of speed for a tag team GX, right? If you get Max Elixir back. <laughs> we, in, we are not then, getting Max Elixir back, not in this yeah, format. Be no awful. way. Be the end of the format. But if you consider if you something like... Did any tag teams? 
if you consider something That'd like a tag team GX, right? If we ever get one, say for example, it attacks for three psychic energy, right? Maybe playing something like the Denny to set that up so that you can quickly get a couple of Malamar out and get one big team up like GX. But you wouldn't even play it. You just discard it. You play your Marshadow and put your Psychic Energy on your Marshadow with your Malamar. Yeah, you probably would, wouldn't you? Yeah, no need to put something weak to Psychic that's worth three prizes in the active. Yeah, that's a good point. No, that's a good point. But you know what I mean, though? If we get any sort of speed, even for Pikachu's Ekrom, like to get um, to find your Stadium, to find your um, energy for the turn, your oh, this, that, the next thing, like maybe playing something like this is actually pretty good. Like, because you only really need one or two tag team GXs with the energy on them, because if you lose them, you would lose the game. I mean, so, like maybe, one, maybe the way you regular GXs. Yeah. So, like, maybe the way you play something like Zekrom Pikachu then is you play like four two four Magnazone, uh-huh. and you just you just set up. You, like, you don't worry about benching a tag team GX because you say you're probably going to play two, maybe three. So you try and avoid starting it. You put out kind of one prize basic stuff initially yeah. until you set up the Magnazone, and then you just go ham when you've well, got the Magnazone ready. Go. Straight away. Exactly, and, and you need just go to go ham. Crazy. So maybe playing something like the Denny is amazing in that. Yeah, to get the Magnazone out, drop the great. tag team GX, throw all the energy on, and then just the Denny, the Denny, the Denny. Draw out your hand completely, draw out your deck completely, and win the game. You know what I mean? Because you're you do crazy numbers with these GXs, and that that and on in and of itself is sounding like a deck to me. Yeah, that that could be a thing. I mean, it's no Pikachu Zekrom Kiawe, but it could be decent. <laughs> Jacob, you're never living that down, buddy. I don't care, it's a good idea. <laughs> well, it does say it only needs to have six energy on it. It doesn't say they only need to be electric energy. Wait, what? Well, we totally missed that. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great point. <laughs> no, no. No, no, if this Pokemon has at least three extra lightning energy attached to it, oh, okay. it's fine. Oh, we, we weren't dumb, that's fine. It's fine, we did read it. <laughs> <laughs> no, my suggestion was Kiawe and then run four rainbow brushes. <laughs> you could run 14 rainbow brushes and that deck still wouldn't work. <laughs> the deck does play 14. Uh, Fight me. And seven Lana. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> Any time, bro. Get on. <laughs> And before this one goes to blows, I want to quickly jump into Memphis. We talked about this earlier, we touched on it. And the top eight has been released via Limitless TCG. And looking at the top eight from Memphis, I was pretty sure I clicked the wrong link. I was pretty sure I had clicked a link from six months ago, maybe last year. And the only thing that threw it for me was the Rayquaza at the bottom. We are looking at the top 8 right now and top to bottom it's Malamar Necrozma, Malamar Necrozma 3 Buzzwall Lycanroc Zoroark another Buzzwall Lycanroc and then I said Vicary. like what happened What ha- we've just sat for 28 minutes talking about how good the format is with Shrine of Punishments and One Prize Attackers and really really exciting looking decks like Grand Bulls that attack for no energy and and how many Grand Bulls can Al play in one deck? <laughs> but now, what true, happened? No what happened? Daniel Al- Altavila brought in Malamar Necrozma and ran through everybody else. And, like, what happened? Buzzwell Lycanroc back? What? <laughs> what? Why? We were all having so much fun. <laughs> Looking at... Altavila's list, there's some really interesting stuff. There is, like, there is he actually. Chimeco, for God's sake. I know. Chimeco, what? Oh, yeah, I think that's. Shout out for cool. Sven, man. Sven's gonna yeah. love this. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But when you think about it, Bella Silence uh, means your opponent can't play any Pokemon that has an ability from their hand during the next turn. That shuts off Ray, it shuts off Vika Volt, it shuts off. Um, Zoroark, yes. Malamar's Zoloarks, it shuts off so much in this format. Like, there's everything. Dawnwing's Necrozma, Necrozma GX. 
Lately, Marshadow. It shuts off more or less his whole deck. <laughs> if he's in the mirror, like, no wonder he won the mirror. He must have just stuck Bella Silence up and attacked every turn with it. Because you, your opponent can't really play anything else down. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's a hell of a tech. But with having the Marshadow GX as well, it's accessible at all times. Mm -hmm. Because you're always going to have Marshadow. Like, that, that's the whole idea of the deck, is you have Marshadow and you power it up with Malamar. So, with one Psychic Energy, you can now shut off your opponent from using any Pokemon that has an ability. There's very few Pokemon that have abilities in the format. Like, or, or the very few that don't have abilities, rather, in the format. I'd be really interested to see Gustavo Wada's list um, that's not been posted just yet. But I'm really interested to see that because if he was able to just Bella Silence and just shut off his opponent, that is incredible. Yeah. Shut off Lycan Rock. Some way. Diancy Prism, Mag Cargo. Everything has an ability. Everything has an ability. It's nuts, man. It's nuts. I can't believe I can't believe this is back already. I thought we just just left it behind. And I mean, if you have a look at the the third place list, Kyle. Um, Lesnowix. Nailed it. Don't know, don't know how to pronounce Nailed it. Nailed it. Apologies. Must be it. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure I'm right. <laughs> I'm always right. Um, but if you look at if you look at his list, man, two Buzzwall GX, two Baby Buzz. I mean, these decks used to be four one. They were for a while. Yeah, I mean, and he's only playing two of the Baby Buzz. It, he's got obviously the McCargo line in there as well. It's it's obviously it's it's insane to see buzz rock back up and you know finishing top eights and all that kind i of stuff really again. thought but i really thought baby buzz uh with garbador ran through this deck hard yeah that's my thought um, as well i'm guessing it just didn't have a massive showing i don't know that's why mm -hmm. i'd love to see the rest of the, the day two uh decks that will be posted um, it says here uh, deck list and day two standings will be uploaded Monday evening European time. It's currently twenty to ten. Put limitless TCG. What are you doing? Um, but I mean, it can't be long until it's updated. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing this though. And yeah. another thing that is surprising me is that Rayquaza GX is still up there. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, right? I got my Rayquazas online. I finally got them, and I did a deck profile. Uh, for the channel and i'm just gonna say it didn't go so well it's still worth a watch guys because it's hilarious to see how badly i managed to do with this deck granted i hadn't had a lot of practice with it right but i kind of figured i've played vikabulu it's going to be fairly close to it. it it's not it's like trying to like so like try to drive a car with my feet it's it's it doesn't work like I don't know, there's something about Ray that just it feels so clunky. It feels so so clunky. I've been saying for since World really that oh. it's so overrated. I mean don't get me wrong. But it keeps it getting top finishes. Be, it has the potential to be amazing, but it's a glass cannon. It keeps doing so well at these big tournaments though. Like I mean eighth place in Memphis, which was a 700 and, 788 Masters showed up to Memphis, and Ray managed to get 8th place. And I'm telling you right now, it's not the only one, because I've seen somebody else on Twitter got pretty high with Ray. And I do know another result, Tablemon, uh, Pablo Mesa got top 32 with Lycanroc uh, Zoroark. Played a really, really nice looking right Lycanroc Zoroark deck with 3 Lycanroc GX, if I remember right. Looked nice. really, really good. So definitely shout out to him. That was really, really well done. He, he's he's been having a bit of a slump recently. He keeps saying he's he's cursed with like bad luck and stuff like that. So top thirty two, man. I'm sure he'll be ecstatic with that. Um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. But the yeah. list looks so simple. It looks very like standard to what we used to see. I'm seeing though, a lot of decks are playing stadium cards. I wonder. I wonder if that's how. Nah, no stadiums in no stadiums in Daniel Atavila's list. I, oh. Now the thing is though, what might have happened here, and without seeing all the other decks, uh -huh. it could have been that people were afraid of br uh, people bringing uh, Sylveons and Stall. I mean, possibly. 
Because, I mean, how do you beat a Sylveon deck? Well, you one-shot it, so something like Buzzwell GX can do that. Or you don't let it run you out of resources, and if you're recycling your energy every turn, yeah. and you can also one-shot it with something like Necrozma GX, for example. Definitely, um, yeah. You know, then maybe that's where this has come from. Because Very obviously, possibly. Shrine decks really struggle against Sylveon. Very possibly, man. Like... We we did see um Sylveon take top place over in um Frankfurt and it was like it came out, it came as a surprise to me. However, um I know that I, th- I think Europe does have a, a different meta when it comes to stall decks. I feel as if Europeans tend to play the stall decks more often than uh, the Americans do, but like Europe just has the top players that actually play stall decks. Well, they, of course, that that's is... like the American top players just don't seem to like them quite as much. No, so they're, a good, they're a good choice. But to just see it come out as like when we look back at um, Philadelphia, Philadelphia was less than well, it was less than a month ago. It was like three weeks ago, and it was just that was it was just dominated by weird decks. It was like all sorts, man. The that was the one. Buzzgarb won the entire thing. Psychic Malamar did did get second, to be fair. But then it was like Buzzwall, Azorok Bayonet, so Galio Metagross. There was some really interesting decks. Zoroark Lycanroc did very well at that tournament. Um, Gustavo Wada played Zoroark Lycanroc, funnily enough, and did well. He's doing well this season. Yeah, I don't know why these people pretend like it's a Buzzwall deck. Because really, I think if you just stack up all the decks that are Lycanroc decks, yeah, from the time when it was Zorak Lycanroc, and now it's Buzzwall, Buzzrock. Bloodthirsty Eyes, man. Boy. Bloodthirsty Eyes is such a busted yeah. ability. And you're hitting 130 with uh, Diancy on the bench, mm-hmm. which is obviously really important for baby buzzies and stuff like that. You're yeah. not psychic weak. Lycanroc's just an awesome card. Lycanroc is an awesome card. I, I... He's a good dog. Really, he's a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, super, super, super excited to see the rest of the the results from that tournament because that was unexpected for me. I mean, coming from genuinely seeing nothing but the uh, um shrine decks and one price attacker decks, even stuff like uh, Rayquaza started putting in. The Delmise and the Shining Lugias and all these sorts of cards, all these one prizers, and then to just go, oh yeah, Zorak Lycanroc dominated and it just it got beat by Psychic Malamar in the final. It was like, wait, what? <laughs> but yeah. Um, now, Lost Thunder's English set list has been released. Uh, we're not going to talk about that too much more today. We have dabbled in it a few times already, but we. Um, are going to do a deep dive on the set next week and to wrap up i want to quickly talk about february's english set which has been revealed as being called team up and will feature the pikachu zekrom gx that we talked about a few weeks ago on the pod uh super super exciting new card we talked about it again a little bit tonight and we've been it has been confirmed product description confirms that pikachu zekrom GX, Hooper GX, Cobalion GX, and Lycanroc GX will be in the set. This is our English set comprised of October's Dark Order. This was the Japan set, Dark Order, and any new cards from GX Ultra Shiny. Um, and of course, we'll feature a Tag Bolt set from Japan. So, Tag Team GX is coming as early as February, and... It's looking pretty cool, man. Six new Tag Team GX Pokemon, six more GX Pokemon, four Prism Star cards, and more than 25 trainers. Uh, Pokebeach reckons that Gengar Mimikyu GX will probably be one of the Tag Team GX cards in the set. Um, And they did put a little note there saying that the Lycanroc GX is probably from GX Ultra Shiny, and it will just be an alternate art. Um... Lycanroc GX with the shiny sprite on it. Simple as that. But yeah, looking pretty cool, man. Like I'm I must admit I'm I'm interested by the tag team GXs. I mean the the first thing that jumps out to you is how big this set's gonna be. Oh it's gonna and be. 
and where we're, we're heading with obviously Lost Thunder being the first one to have over 200 cards. And this is going to be this huge one as well. Is, and... The Pikachu Zekrom is number 33 out of 181. I mean, there you go. So, so there's a whole gonna, bunch of cards right. in this. And the thing is, it'll say 181, but that won't include the secret rares. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So, might you be to over 200 overall? There will be, because they'll, they'll need to add an extra 12 um, full art uh, GX for, you know, six tag team, six regular, and you would assume six. Well, you don't necessarily know close how enough. going to have all those open art. It wouldn't surprise me. It's it's money though, isn't it? Let's be honest. They are literally are printing the money. <laughs> they will yeah, happily the print the money. Zekrom is kind of different from a normal GX, isn't it? It is. It is a bit, yeah. So they might do something different with the like full arts or rainbows or whatever. Yeah. I guess you never know, but either way, I think we're going to get multiple versions of the cards. Yeah, um, All the full art it's... supporters as well. I mean, I am never going to complain about having more Pokemon cards and things like that because the no. more the more variety there is in the format and all that other kind of stuff. But it's going to be so tough to try and get a hold of what you need, and that's because coming it's from be so much jank. That's coming from a plate, right? I've just looked back. Um, sorry, just quickly talking about set sizes. Um, Lost Thunder is out of two hundred and fourteen, so this will be significantly smaller than Lost Thunder. But it's still a massive set at 181 cards. Like, there's no denying that. That's still a very big set, but not Lost Thunder levels of Broken Huge. Um, mm. Yeah, as, as you were saying there, another thing I wanted to touch on. the um, you're, you're saying it will be hard for us to get certain cards, and we are coming from a place of... I mean, all of us have a job. We're all a lot older than a lot of the kids that come to League and stuff like that. Do you think the sets are getting a bit big? For I mean, for kids that want to collect, it's fair enough. For, like they're probably never going to get the full set anyway. But like for kids that want to just come and play and want their four of, like Lycanroc GX or their four of, um, Zera Aura Suicune GX, whatever they happen to want to play, do you think it's a bit much to be like? this set is huge and just deal with it because the amount of cards you're actually going to pull it will be playable yeah it's good you're going to struggle yeah i, th I think it, it's I, from that perspective yeah definitely it's the it's, kids it's i think about because it, it, it must be hard especially the kids whose parents don't and don't, they don't play pokemon they don't yeah. really understand it and they don't they don't really know what they're doing with the cards and things like that it's it has got to be tough because if as you were saying john we've all got jobs and things like that so if one of us wants to drop you know a hundred quid on a play set of shiny rainbow rare lichen rock or whatever yeah. or, you know the denny's, denny's and stuff yeah. like that we, we'll go and do it and okay it's gonna hurt the pocket a wee bit but we, we can we, we can, can take, take that, that decision whereas a kid can't and if you're trying to like our kids that come to league and stuff like that you're trying to encourage them to be more competitive but yeah when they're they're rocking up and they've got one Zera Aura and one Sceptile GX and you're like you can't make a deck here yeah what what are we actually going to do with this now I will say that Pokemon does do pretty well in giving out good cards in their boxes now um, mm, something that didn't true. used to happen when I first started collecting well, I remember when I first started getting back into the game some of the GX's I was picking up were the hottest garbage, sorry EX's or some of the hottest garbage you can possibly imagine, like Gallade EX and mm -hmm. like Aurorus EX, and they were all absolutely terrible. There was no playability in them whatsoever. And to get the Dark Rise and the Mega Mewtwo's and stuff like that, that were the really playable cards at the time, you were dropping crazy amounts of money just to play the deck. I think Mega Mewtwo at the time was like 30 quid for just one. Like Mega Ray was a big deck at the time. That was extortionate. Yeah. It was so disappointing. Like because you come in at such a ground level. Man, like Mega Evolution EXs were just the worst mechanic, weren't they? They were. I, I wouldn't say it was but the I mean, worst mechanic, like, but it was. This pack, and I get this on common. That I need to open, like two different, unique, EX rares to get to play. Yeah. Alright, yeah, thanks for the spirit, like, 
yeah and good. even so. like if you consider something like the um the Rayquaza EX that had the it had the Mega Evolution that was the gold card in the then the next set, so you couldn't even get the Rayquaza from that set. You had to so if you got a box, for example, and you managed to pull the gold Rayquaza, you would have to get a box of the other set to pull the freaking regular Rayquaza to evolve it into. Do you know what I mean? Like it was, it was frustrating. But like, I just feel like they're doing so well at adding in all these budget decks like your lost march and your even stuff like shrine shrine is like a, a fairly accessible card it's not crazy it, it's I mean, there's decks you can make that are like pretty pretty viable and pretty cheap like yes deck that you love so much exactly well, uh, um like things like napoleon and, and buzzgarb definitely yeah, buzzgarb <laughs> pretty the they're all no, fairly like, like fairly cheap decks but yeah. i just fear that with the massive set sizes is pikachu's ekrom going to be a really really good card for example that or even any of the other tag team gx's are they going to be just broken and then this massive set size means that it's even more expensive and it's just impossible for people to get i'm not talking about us i'm talking about the kids that we try to teach to be a little bit better like it's just gonna suck but yeah, that that I do have a little bit of fear about that. I must admit. No, I, I'm with you there. I guess the counter argument is, as as I was saying there, that there are a lot of kind of non GX that decks are fairly viable, of course, and and you can play them. But as you uh, equally as you're saying here, if if it turns out that Pikachu Zekrom with Kiawe or Magnezone or whatever <laughs> that game GX is just goes ham. And dominates everything. Well, it doesn't matter how good. I probably wouldn't worry about that. I think you know? the problem with most of the like sort of middling non EX, like non GX decks, is that they're mostly just die to lightning rock. Well, there is that. And I mean, he's just going to keep taking care of things. But I mean, we are getting six of these. We know one. We we we're we assume kind of pretty sure it's yeah. Gengar Mimikyu, but we and, don't know uh, anything that that does. Of Buzzwell as well. Feramos of Buzzwell. I'm excited for that. Ooh, finally. Some grass support. <laughs> Do you think it'll be grass? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, it'll be fighting. <laughs> of course, it'll be fighting. But see, if it is grass, you can use the new um, grass ball, whatever it's called, and Nest, all these Nest, other kind Nest, of netball. Netball. Yeah. netball, all these other kind of cool stuff. Ball Venusaur to put more energy on it. Mm -hmm. Oh but man, is, imagine that. That would be ridiculous. Venusaur plus a GX attack like Zekrom and Pikachu have. But, but that's exactly the point, isn't it? Like, we don't know what these other ones are going to do. We don't know what the other three are full stop. Of course. So maybe they are going to release something that is just going to be insane. Oh, maybe. Maybe. We can we can but speculate. And hopefully by the time... I mean, we, we won't be doing more... Uh, we're not recording a pod next week. We're obviously going to do our Lost Thunder set analysis for next week. But hopefully by the time two weeks comes around, we have a little bit more stuff to talk about and yeah at that point i think i'm gonna to need to wrap it up um it's been all right guys isn't it yeah it's been a lot of fun yeah um and as i say i will wrap it up we'll go we'll speak to you guys next week and yeah lost thunder man we're just around the corner